Hello and welcome back everyone, the name is Kahankyo and the game is Pokemon Duel. Finished 14th in the previous month, February, 20 booster ticket, 300 Carmenite and a UX cube. You already seen the booster ticket opening, just went here to brag. And also write this, <laughs> Rowan, a bot thing with a rush deck and Feeny included. Oh my god, those, those bots with the sea levels and levels are freaking scary, I'm gonna tell you this much. Ride and watch hentai all the time with Senpai. My soul is tormented by a sucky bitch Call assist, pants who dripping from the way I spit Fell in love with this for today, though, we're gonna pause a little bit the grind for 4K because there is and help or was and help featured versus a player the name I cannot pronounce, and and help is rocking Celestila triple Celestila deck. It it is an absolutely nice, an absolutely awesome combination because of the ability of Mega, uh, what do you call it, Mega Sheep, this ship that goes to the goal. I can't click on the uh, screen right now because this is a video recording, therefore it's not the duel, therefore it's not the feature duel, and you understand the uh, the correspondence. But what happens here, the enemies rocking two Combuskin, two Chicken, that uh, can instant knockout people uh, from the duel to the PC by this Cyclone Kick, and this is absolutely a great idea because Nowadays, there is so much damage going through that if you don't have those figures with the damage included, you are only relying on either a Sunsteel Strike, Moongeist Beam, Cyclone Kick, Flame Gun, and so on, so on, so on, Sure Cold, to get those uh, OP figurines, you know, knocked out and whatever not. So we're gonna see and help attacking here, trying to get the freaking rendezvous that he wants to get the enemy figures to the Ultra Space. Unfortunately, the Garibald is gonna roll twice in a row, that's pretty suck against a four-star purple of that uh, Blaziken, but he's not giving up hope. He's sending out his freaking what I call him, Zorark there. There's gonna be another Celestila deployed, and Celestila is probably one of the coolest uh, Ultra Beasts right about now because she brings a lot of freaking interactions in general. She goes to the Ultra Space as well, and fun fact here, if uh, Celestila does make the... Uh, the rendezvous spinning near the Lunala or Solgaleo uh, while she uh, b battles them or any other Pokemon such as Mega Gengar that doesn't allow any other movement beside, uh, besides them, uh, she is gonna be not moved to the Ultra Space and and Help is gonna demonstrate that and I didn't know that when I watched it the first time but it's pretty darn cool. And what other cool is, the uh, thing is, this is like a, a little bit buffed up Fini deck because you are able to banish a lot of mons pretty efficiently and Tapu Fini with the Altaria is pretty much the same with the Pony Wish but this is the Ultra Space basically speaking if you would like or if Help would like to have the uh, the Cosmog instead of the Speed Form to have the Nebby's power to bring his uh, mons from the Ultra Space and by the way if you do manage to uh, watch a lot of those people in the in the feature duels if you encounter them a lot Nebby's power now with the Cosmog is a great tool to bring yourself your mons back from the Ultra Space because that's how the devs made it. So Flame Gun is gonna roll. That's gonna guarantee not to get knocked out for the first turn of that uh, of that Celestila, and she wants to roll the blue rendezvous, uh, rendezvous. I don't know. That it's it's probably French. It's a rendezvous, which means basically to meet someone up somewhere. And that Lunala is going to get excluded on her own. And that's pretty freaking cool because now she's going to attack again. And that is going to be the freaking Garibald of against a cross counter. is going to knock her out. But the um, the ability of that Mega Sheep brings another Pokemon from either Ultra Space or PC or Bench near him. And that's pretty darn amazing because you can bring two people. Then you can recycle if you need to to bring a third one. And, excuse me, a fourth one. And there's gonna be a miss. Such a lucky roll. Of course, and help here is looking for that blue. He wants to banish as many Pokemon as possible right here before anything bad happens and before he loses. So therefore, it's, even though it's gonna be a, a one MP Mon, it's basically <laughs> good enough because slowly but surely, you're gonna wear down your opponent's team. They like it or not, if they get banished, you can still get your Mons back, but they can't. Therefore, it's GG well played, so. There's gonna be an attack and another rendezvous is gonna scroll and boom, see you later. No one cares who you are, where you're from and what you do. You are gonna get demolished. And of course, he wants to do the same with the Zabdos. He's gonna roll the flamethrower, good enough to kill the Zabdos 
Flamethrower is such a strong ability. Burn people, do stuff to them, you know, kill them. And 137 damage being so standard right about now. This is kind of sort of scary, you know. If you ask me, I mean, Rush decks are going to be in a big trouble right here. Because those rendezvous things are definitely going to make you, you know, outnumbered. And when you're outnumbered, you can't rely possibly to do everything that you need when you're, like, sending out your mons to... Uh, to hook you up with with more support and so on so my blue on on septile if i decide to roll septile once again on mew mew is now more relevant than ever in my opinion because of that blue because of that 40 or in my case 40 but because of that hypersonic which is not allowing anything above 100 damage to knock you out it's extremely relevant i don't know if you agree or disagree it's totally up to you to decide but uh, i believe that all those super awesome mons right here are very scary and having something that allows you to not die and keep yourself alive for a little longer in this specific meta frankly speaking is good enough for me so there's gonna be a goal towards another fly by the way the tiniest of flies this is a 1 mp mon that does provide a lot of damage a lot of versatility and a lot of utility because it is somewhat mobile as well we're gonna see that at the attack once again because, yes, they want to do the rendezvous. I don't know if that rendezvous is uh, a necessary ability. Can you cancel it or does it just happen like fake out? Because Typhoon Slash, you decide if you want to do it. Like Stealth Head, you decide if you want to do it. Is this something that you decide? And help if you're watching this channel, just leave it down in the comments because it's very interesting to understand how it works. Uh, therefore, I, 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 not therefore, but I don't have this, uh, this bond, so th therefore I don't know how it works. But we're going to see the Koka trying to attack here. And there's going to be a dodge towards the dodge. There's going to be an advancement of the Zoroark, I would assume. There could be the Mega Evolution from that sheep to get uh, more of those banished mons back on the field. But 99 towards 99 is going to be a natural turn. That's an absolute beast Zoroark, by the way. It's going to knock out that Coco. I wouldn't, frankly. No, no, Coco. Coco had probably the lowest chance to kill that Zoroark than the... Uh, the Combuskin had there. Combuskin could get the evolution and, uh, you know, do other things about it. But effectively banished three enemy Pokemon right there. And the weak spot kick is going to spin, I think, twice here. And, and help is going to get weight. Yeah, it's going to spawn spin twice. That could potentially be a, you know, one-man army of that Combuskin. But it's not going to happen. The speed form is going to go out. Enemy Zorg is going to go out. But the enemy Zorg is not even as close, as uh, strong as the uh, and helps there. So there's going to be a double chance. I would go for maybe X attack or something. I don't know. Because, frankly speaking, no matter what you roll, if he rolls 99, you won't win. Basically, I don't know. That's going to be a respin. Doesn't matter because Knight's days and the Knight basically covered by the counter attack being 99 right there. Awesome play. Well played. And help. Absolutely phenomenal. And as I was scrolling through the uh, feature duels, I frankly stumbled upon this... Double Swablu, Altaria, Noivern, Noibat, you know, all those crazy uncommon duel right here with all the birds and everything. And even though Noibat, uh, sorry, Noivern did get a tiniest of the buffs right about now, well, it's not a tiniest of the buffs, but frankly speaking, it, it didn't change too much. The Pokemon was exactly what it was earlier, just a little bit of a, just a tiny bit of a buff, I would add. But the fun fact here is that Right here, it's two flying decks. Absolutely crazy, both of them. With the Zabdas, with the Swablus, with the little uh, monkey thing, the, 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 the bear thing. If, the, if I was the bear user, I would have the evolution. Maybe, unfortunately, they don't have the evolution. But with the evolution, it's a lot stronger, that bear, I'm telling you right now. And if I ever pull, like, two more Swablus, I will be running that deck. With the Noibat to Noivern, I will absolutely rock that deck. But uh, what we can see here is... Not that, it's the buffs to the Noivern and from Noibat to Noivern and so on, so on, so on, being super relevant. Like, right now, the worth one is going to spin, it's going to knock out that little bear, doesn't matter. The, the evolution is going to come in and the three star freaking Bombard, not the Bombard, Hurricane. And that Hurricane is so freakishly awesome, or like legit, it's amazing right now. It, it was amazing, but with the current meta, this is just... This is just an amazing showcase because there you go. The hurricane is gonna spin. Boom. First of all, one benched and everybody gains weight. 
I don't know if that effect is gonna be uh, multiplied by the mud energy. I'm gonna have to check it out if you uh, add the mud energy that adds plus one weight. I don't know how exactly it works because I haven't used it in super long uh, since the seismitodes. But if that multiplies it to give you three weight, that is gonna be some crazy shenanigans right there. So it's gonna be another turn, one more turn. And this thing with the uh, weight is gonna happen quite a few times on both ends, frankly speaking. I, I watched this duel the, the entirety of it. I was gonna spin the hurricane. And if I do get a Neuvern, I do actually get the Neuvern. But if I do manage to level it up, I will definitely level that, uh, that bomb burst and I will always run it with the evolution. I don't think it's worth running without the evolution because the uh, sheer fact that it notifies gold attacks from your opponents, either you attack or they attack, doesn't matter. Gold won't work, so therefore if you spin your purple, unless they spin a blue and uh, unless they spin a higher uh, star purple, you're gonna always be winning and that is just pretty crazy because you bench the opponent anyway. It's like the Cyclone from uh, Lugia, but then again all the flying types of the enemy on the field do get the uh, the weight as well and if the mud energy does work on this that's gonna be pretty pretty strong I'm, I'm telling you absolutely phenomenal so we're gonna see a lot of battles right here the Swablus and the Altaria are actually giving more buffs to the uh, top player right there but uh, the uh, <laughs> the steel wing is not good enough against the Thunder Crush so there's gonna be an attack there's gonna be a Swablu advancing there's gonna be the Altaria trying to advance and I don't really agree with this movement from Gonzo frankly speaking because Altaria can you know Spin the damage, kill the Swablu, yes, blah, blah. But there are so much neutral turns going through. You know, the one can spin purple, the other can spin purple. Like right now it does spin the Cotton Guard, which means you have to kill it twice. And that is pretty stupid. Swablu is extremely powerful for a <laughs> for a low tier Pokemon. I think that uh, it shouldn't have round. It should have a damaging damage of 30 at most and not a round effect. Like that for me, it's uh, it's an overkill for a non-common, frankly. That's that's my opinion. Or if you're decreasing the damage values, decreasing for all Pokemon on the field, not just the enemy Pokemon. But we're gonna see the Neuron, and there I go. The um, versatility and just a better case when it's evolved. Three star purple gives weight to everyone unless you have a plate to use. You gain a weight loss. And I don't think this is going to be a weight loss in, in general from the duel. But frankly speaking, it's just pretty, pretty darn cool. So there's going to be another attack. Neuvern on Neuvern. 3-star to 2-star. Purple. But there's going to be the Dragon Pulse rolling 100 damage after the uh, debuffing from two Swablus. Going to get sent to the bench. And of course, they need to use more plates. Like, if this happens at the later stages of the game where you already had like 100 turns and there is no plates left... You know, this is freaking scary, you know? So, Bombers against the Bombers. The Evolution plus the Altaria doing the job, killing that other Neuvern. It's uh, pretty efficient. And right here, I wouldn't attack. You know that that dude already has the Evolution. You won't, your gold won't be gold. So, the point of attacking there is actually irrelevant. You shouldn't. You should have just wait. Go ahead, kill the uh, Swablu next to your Swablu and so on, so on. But all right. There's going to be the Knockout. Swablu doesn't have a gold, so... It was adjacent to that Zabdos, but it, since it didn't have gold, it didn't have anything to spin. Therefore, it doesn't get knocked out. And right about now, because there are a couple of Swablus on the bottom side, if this guy attacks and gets the 40, even if the other dude, you know, uh, if it's zero on zero damage and it doesn't kill it, it still benches it. Because that's how his 40 is. It's, it's a benching mechanism. It's like, uh, it's like Dragon Tail. I don't know if you remember the Dragon Tail, but that's exactly what it does. So right about now, I would go with the bear and try and kill the little um, Altaria, frankly speaking. Not not do that. I wouldn't do that. I would kill the Altaria, let the Zabbos maybe surround it so, and then set the Swablu next to, uh, right, right on top of the uh, entry once again. And not risk, like, that was that was a silly attack, frankly speaking. So then we're going to see another Neuvern, and we're going to see another Swablu going through. And <laughs> nothing you can do. You Like, Swablu can't kill Swablu when there's not enough Swablus on the on the uh, field and we're gonna see the Eeks speed going for Eeks speed very crucial right here because this is gonna <laughs> this is gonna happen the Thunder Charge is gonna get charged against the Bombars of 100 there's no adjusted Pokemon so there's not gonna be any spinning but again Neuvern versus Neuvern gonna be two star purple again the Hurricane is gonna make everyone have weight and this guy go to the bench absolutely stupendously good right about now 
And this could be Poké Switch. All right, the Neuvern, that's a good call right there. Because that Neuvern could potentially, you know, get the other one out of, uh, of the situation. So it's gonna be an attack. The pack towards a round. Round is gonna get 20 damage, gonna kill that other Swablu, and now it's looking grim for freaking uh, Gunzo. He's gonna attack the Neumann, and he's gonna get the three star Hurricane. If that was a three versus three star Hurricane, that would have been just game right there. But since he ran it without the evolution, he doesn't get it. And since he doesn't get it, he, he lets the other player have a shot at whatever the other player was trying to have a shot at. So we're gonna see another Hurricane, by the way, going through. This is so crazy. This this is just satisfying to watch, frankly speaking. I don't know why, I just love it. So there's gonna be another attack. I really disagree with this player's uh, plays because there is so very much little that you can do. You need to roll your Thunder Crush against the player's 60 or 50, whatever that is, to go ahead and kill it. And that's unlikely to happen, you know? Like, he's gonna roll the Bumpar Span and there's an Altaria on the field. Which means you're gonna get lost in in the uh, situation. There's still a Swablu on the enemy side that gives you the debuffs. Ah, I don't know. The dodges though is on both sides. The roots and dodges coming in very clutch. And uh, I don't know. I'm still would utilize my bear a little bit more. My bear, if I would play this bear, it would would potentially knock people out effectively. You know. So even even now, you know, send the bear. I know he's gonna send the Neuvern to defend, but then again, you send your other Neuvern and try to get Hurricane once more. And by the way, that was, I think, a misplay of the uh, top player to send out the Swablu, but it paid off for him for once that he got the kill on the Neuvern, that 60 did roll. That was very unfortunate, frankly, because if anything else would roll, if that Hurricane would roll one again, once again, that would be GG will play. So, again, another unnecessary attack. Like, for real, that is just absolutely unnecessary right there. Utilize your bear. Try and go for those, uh, what do you call it, wave arms or whatever that is called, bear hug, I don't know, the 40 that he has. Try and bench people off because the Altaria, the enemy Altaria is going to try and get a Paris song or whatever not and uh, banish you or so. And those Wobblers are not going to kill anything. Cotton Guard is going to go in against the Cotton Guard. Neutral turns. And we're going to see the Altaria rolling a dodge after a dodge. 16 slices, sorry, 12 slices of dodge. Not too shabby, you know what I'm saying? Another dodge, by the way. Pretty, pretty crazy stuff right there. And we're gonna see a Parish song going on. Fine off freaking Lee. That Altaria gonna do the curse marker on the enemy Swablu. And then we're gonna see the try and attack thing on it. I don't necessarily agree on that. Just don't attack. Leave the Altaria, do whatever it was. Surround it next turn if you, if you may. But why attack? That was a silly attack because you allow her to do whatever she wants. And the player is going to scoop it up and bring it back on the field. Not cursed. Good enough, I guess. And we're going to see the Swablu trying to advance. There's going to be a defense trying to attack it. There's going to be probably a roost. No, another dodge. All right. I do remember that there's a lot of dodges in this duel. That's why it takes 111 rounds so far. Extremely, <laughs> there's a roost. Extremely long duel, by the way. But uh, what can you do? What can you do? The Paris song is not going to go through because it didn't roll, the flamethrower it did, and there we go, freaking finally the bear is gonna start rolling. Another dodge, this is super crazy. Those wave arms, if it's, I mentioned again, if it's zero on zero damage with uh, the uh, thing, they're still gonna send you to the bench. Round of 10 against the flail of 30, he's gonna send that Swablu back, and that's good news, frankly speaking, because that Swablu was giving a lot of minus damage, and we're gonna see the parry song against the miss. All right, that is kind of sad, but if you go ahead and you attack a Neuvern and you do manage to spin his Hurricane, he's gonna send you to the bench. You're gonna uh, lose that uh, that curse marker, frankly, but we're gonna see the Thunder Crush towards the Flamethrower and that will banish that Altaria completely out of the duel. There are still two cursed Pokemon that you can equalize the thing with, but the Roost is not gonna allow you to do so. And, uh, <laughs> That's pretty darn scary. All right, so they're gonna be the Zabas grabbing the entry once again. Like, time after time that Zabas is going for the entry. Round zero towards round of 20 is gonna go through. It's gonna kill that Swablu, get nine me Amiga Swablu, and I disagree with this move once again. <sighs> Just go with the Swablu, try and attack, get the wave arms, send him off, you know, bring the Zabas a little bit closer before you do that, and keep on rolling, you know? So there's gonna be another attack. All right, I don't remember what happens here, but I think there's 
yeah, Hurricane is gonna go through. Gonna send that one to the bench and gain everyone weight. But now the enemy can attack that little wave army, wave army. He's like, I'm gonna defend here, Annalee. But the miss towards the flail is gonna be just about enough to send that Zabdas flying back to the bench, to the uh, PC, I'm sorry, where he belongs. And there's a, gonna be the Hurricane. Final freaking lead. This dude is gonna lose his curse marker. Everybody's gonna gain weight. Luckily, those that are already on the bench don't get weight. Because if that was be the case, ooh, that's gonna be like pretty darn strong. So the Roost once again against that Swablu, pretty darn strong. That Roost is happening every freaking other uh, roll. So there's gonna be the Bear trying to advance. There's gonna be the Swablu attacking once again. Another dodge, like, <laughs> oh my God, okay. What do you want to do? You want to kill those little buggers, you want to send them away, and there you go. What I was saying, zero on zero damage, boom, still get benched, gets weight. And uh, th this would be like perfect with some Gazlord <laughs> shenanigans on top of this. Like, gain everyone weight, give your Gazlord like close, keep it close to, to enemies, and uh, start killing them. So, pack of zero against a flail is gonna make this other Swablu fly off. But those Swablus are gonna just keep on scrolling in and nothing that can stop them, frankly. Unless you actually seal those entries at some point and, you know, do something about it. Right about now, the round against the Thunder Crush is gonna be just about enough to keep that Swablu out on the bench, on the PC or whatever. And that Noivern needs once again to spin the Hurricane. And if that happens, but he spins the Dragon Pulse towards a Flail. Holy wow. And gets knocked out. And now, I don't know. He makes a play to go for the sword. Maybe, just maybe. Because he believes that nothing can kill him unless he rolls a bad roll. And the roost is going to stop the enemy from doing anything. He's going to roost once again. A lot of dodge. And freaking finally, he gets the game. OMG. And this is just a fraction of what is to come. If you go to Feature Duels and you go ahead and check out all the new figures that are playing right now, there is so much synergies. Like, Ant Harp is featured once again with his awesome deck, and Supa is featured. A lot of people are featured, and now you can actually see that instead of Lunala Sol Galio, Lunala Sol Galio, and Tapu Koko, there are differential in the ranked uh, duels. Like, the feature duel right here, yeah, of course, there's still like Coco in every deck and, and Lunala in every other deck. But you can see, we can see Joey here with his unique deck. We can see the Ultra Beast deck, of course, with the Coco. We can see a lot of, uh, how do you call it, differentiality, okay? We're not seeing the same over and over. Like Reflex right here, absolutely awesome deck. I want to try this so bad. Once I step over that margin of 4K, I promise I will play every freaking fun deck I can possibly imagine and I will forget all the meta. I won't care about the ranking ever again unless there's somebody else reaching 5k and the uh, the standard switches up. Then, of course, I'm going to try to hit the 5k, but I don't see that happening anytime soon because at that rating, there's not too many players. Like, even right here where I am, 13, 9, 70, I am playing versus bots every other game. Like legit uh, if you click where do you click here on this one right i'm 1687 did i see correctly where am i me you okay me why can't i see myself what's happening i don't know why i can see myself but uh, i think i was 1670 something something which uh was given to me just by playing against bots. 1687, yeah. It was given to me because I was playing versus bots. And if you check out my duels this month, ah, uh, come on game, just I'm clicking here, please. By the way, I do believe that the game responds a little faster than it used to, but that could be just me. Because I earlier I, I used to tap like 17 times and now I just tap like 11. <laughs> but uh, yeah. When I say I played eight duels this month, I uh, won seven of them, and I haven't climbed almost at all. <laughs> I started climbing to this, I don't remember what was the first video number, but uh, I'm here. I haven't even had my, my maxed out highest rank yet. I need eight points to that. But all right, we're gonna resume the grind for 4K tomorrow. For today, hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you have any more ideas, about what we should feature on the channel or like synergies between other Pokemon and decks, especially the new banner. Leave it down in the comments. I'd really like to read those. 
And uh, if you do believe I should do some more pulls on this March 1st banner, leave it also down in the comments because I do believe that either this is a bait banner and there's something a lot better coming in and I should keep my, uh, my gems to myself for the time being or I'm missing out on something tremendous that I just haven't seen just yet. And I should go ahead and pull some of the figures because they are worth it. I don't know, you tell me. As for me, I'm Hanky. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And as always, have a nice day.